I temporarily mounted the capacitors in the chassis so we can get a preview of how they're going to look. And I think that's pretty sweet. Now these do still need to be restuffed. The originals according to the schematic were 6 microfarad but I don't know what the voltage rating was, it's just not specified. It's probably 450 or 475 volts. The caps that were in the radio were replacements and they were 12 microfarad 450 volts, so double what the originals were. Now neither 6 or 12 is a, a standard value made these days, but 10 microfarads is, and they're readily available, so I could go with something like this. Or, what I'm thinking of doing is going with these guys. These are plastic film caps. These will last virtually forever. Whereas modern electrolytics are certainly better than the old wet type, but these will go bad eventually, maybe in a few decades, whereas these will last a whole lot longer. But more importantly, these are rated for 630 volts. I've put a meter on tube radios before, and when you first turn them on and that 80 rectifier starts conducting, the first capacitor, the, the one that's closest to the rectifier and uh, next to the choke, so you have one capacitor, then a choke, and a second cap. So that, that first cap gets hit with pretty high voltage, sometimes upwards of 600 volts, because the other tubes haven't started conducting yet, which pulls down that voltage. Now, these type of caps can take a bit of a surge voltage without blowing out, but it does stress them a bit. So, that's another reason I'm thinking of going with these. Now, these are 2.2 microfarad each, and I figure I could put three of them in parallel to make 6.6. .6. And these will just fit inside that copper tube. As I think I mentioned earlier, I also picked up these guys which are 6.8 microfarad 450 volt cap. That's another option, except that these don't fit. So, uh, I might temporarily tack these in, but uh, they are not going to be a very good permanent solution because they won't fit inside the can. I could stick them underneath the chassis, but you know, I like to keep things neat and clean and original. Alright, I'm going to save that for a little later because there's something else I want to look at right now. It's something I've been putting off, which is to check out the shadow meter. There is a meter, a meter-like movement inside here. There's an aluminum vein, uh, from what I understand. I, I was doing some reading online. Uh, I just did a web search for a Filco shadow meter and I found a really good article about not only how they work, but how they can be repaired. So I got a little box here, a light bulb back here, and then there's a hole in the back. So light shines through that hole and illuminates this green panel up front. And inside here there's a, a coil of wire, a horseshoe magnet, and a little uh, uh, what they call a vein made out of aluminum. And that meter movement makes it, uh, I don't know, twist or move back and forth or open and close or something that makes a, a shadow on here that opens and closes as you tune in stations. So that's what these two wires are for, that meter movement. So the first thing I want to do is check the resistance on this. And to do that I need to flip up the chassis and I want to disconnect at least one of these wires because it's in circuit now and uh, other components it's attached to might give me a misleading reading. And uh, if it does measure good resistance, what I want to try doing is actually simulating how this would work. So I would need to apply about 6 volts to illuminate the light bulb, and then apparently about a 10 volt. Uh, a 10 volts will give you a meter deflection, so I'm thinking I can use my WaveTech, set them a really low frequency, and uh, do like a 10 volt peak to peak sine wave, and we should, I should be able to get this thing to do a nice pulse, you know, uh, kind of a, you know, slowly open and close and open and close. Here are the two wires for the shadow meter. Come through a hole in the chassis here and run over to here and down here. I've removed one of the wires. Got one side of an ohm meter clipped in and now 
a moment I'm really dreading because if this is bad it's uh, I'm gonna have to rewind the coil and that looks like it's quite an undertaking so here goes All right, 5.6. Huh. I mean, it's great we got continuity, but I do recall somebody recently uh, on the Philco radio forum was discussing what the resistance on a good shadow meter should be, and I swear he said it was like 1.8K or something like that, certainly less than this. However, there were several incarnations of the shadow meter and this is one of the earlier types so maybe it has a higher resistance I don't know but uh, I'm gonna make a note of this reading and go post online and see what uh, people have to say and then uh, I'll try rigging this up as I described with the wave tech alright time for a test and I'll tell you I was just watching uh, Lockmeister's <laughs> series of videos on restoring, I think it was a Philco 16B where he had to repair one of these and oh man I I definitely do not want to go through that he had to rewind the, the coil inside here which has something like a thousand turns on it and uh, it uh, was quite a project but uh, I think he did get his working in the end so it can be done alright so what I've done is I don't want to power up the whole sex, there's still some some work to do so I just pulled off one of the wires going to the bulb and I just hooked up a five and a half volt battery directly to it likewise I have disconnected the leads for the shadow meter and they're going to my wave tech I've got it set uh, for like one Hertz and a triangle wave and uh, I've got uh, the voltage on the highest range but I got to turn down all the way so I don't want to not sure how much voltage I really need to deflect this, assuming it even works. Alright, keep your fingers crossed. I'm going to turn on the function generator and start increasing the output voltage. Oh yeah, this looks promising. Awesome. Looks like it's working just fine. That's really, really cool. That's a maximum output voltage. I'm not sure if it would get even wider if I had a little more voltage. Increasing the frequency a little bit. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so that's a, it's a triangle wave, let's try a sine wave, a little bit different, square wave is probably not going to, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not a good idea. Alright, so, check one more item off the list, that is fantastic. Now back to the capacitor rebuilding. I took the most dinged up of the three to experiment with and I ended up on crimping the end like I've been doing on a bunch of TVs I've worked on where I unnurled the uh, the lip there that was crimped over. I used a little screwdriver, worked my way around then switched to some flat needle nose pliers and then I started to uh, work the central disc out. I heated the end up a little bit and then used some pliers and grabbed onto the nuts and wiggled it back and forth. And I just finally exposed the insides. Some nice blue corrosion there. I'm sure that's from some interaction with all the, the copper and the electrolyte. Hopefully a little bit more wiggling and that whole disc will pull right out. All it took was one more tug and that disc came loose. And now we can see what was inside here. So just like other caps I've pulled the guts out of, it's a 
spiral coil of aluminum and originally this would have had a liquid in there which has long since dried up but unlike other caps I've opened up this one is nice and pretty inside usually uh, they use some type of uh, borac or boric acid solution and uh, they're, when they're in aluminum cans they come out as white crystals I don't know if these are different electrolyte or it's just because the copper was present but they made these nice blue crystals. Oh, there's the insulating material. So I hope uh, uh, I hope a little warm water rinse will clean all that right out and then I can try putting some new caps inside. Although this isn't the one I'm really going to use now. I just like I said wanted to experiment because this one has some dents and dings on it. I chose the better of the two to actually put in the radio but since I'd never done one of these before I figured I'd use this one as a guinea pig.